In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to use Photoshop's powerful retouching tools to give your portraits a digital makeover. So here we have our original image, and as you can see, it's a little bit too light, which shows that it's slightly overexposed. And we've also got a few blemishes and spots on the model that we just want to correct with Photoshop's retouching tools. So, after we've done all of our enhancements and improved the skin tones and the tones in the background and hair, we'll end up with a much enhanced image which will look just like this. And as we can see here, we've got darker skin tones, we've also removed a lot of those spots and blemishes, smoothed the skin slightly, burnt in the background and also just whitened up the teeth and the eyes a little bit as well. So we've got a much better looking portrait. So what we need to do first of all is open up our image within Adobe Camera Raw or ACR and we're just going to make our first few changes to our raw file. So I'll start off by just closing these two down and if I go up to File and Open just select Portrait Before .nef, and that'll open automatically within Adobe Camera Raw. OK, with the image open within Adobe Camera Raw the first thing we want to do is to remove that slightly cool colour cast and the easiest way to do that is just by using the white balance tool and you'll find this on the top tool palette just here and it looks like a small pipette. Now if we move that down and we're just going to hover over a white area of the eye just left click once and you'll instantly see the cast within the portrait change. Now, if we have a look over here on the right and have a look at the uh, temperature, we see at the moment it's about 5,150. And if we want to warm up the skin tones just a little bit more, we can just move that slightly to the right. We'll just cool them down a little bit. We can just move them over to the left. Now, about 5,100 is right, and we can see there we've got quite a nice skin tone going on. Just below that, we've got our tint. That's set to minus 10, which is just right for this image. OK, now the skin colour is looking a lot better, but it's still a little bit too bright. So what we want to do is just darken that down. But by doing that, we don't want to lose some of that shadow detail in the eyes and around the hair. So the first thing we're actually going to do is just lighten up some of that shadow detail by increasing the exposure just very slightly to about plus 0 0.25. And as you do that, you can just see the histogram moving over to the right and just filling out a little bit. Now, we also just want to give that, those shadows just a little bit more light. So I'm just going to increase the fill light slider just slightly and up to about plus five. And you'll see the left-hand side of the histogram, which is all that shadow detail, is just lighting up and moving over to the right. Now, obviously, we've still got quite a light image here. So I need to pull back the brightness a little bit. So I'm going to reduce our brightness slider from plus 50, which it is as default, down to about plus 25. And as I do that you can really see how those skin tones improve. So if I just click preview off and back on again you can just see how that has really helped to improve those skin tones. Now although the tones are looking a lot better the image is looking just a little bit flat we want to pull out some of that detail around some of the facial features. So I'm going to do that by just using the clarity slider and then give the skin just a little bit more saturation by using the vibrant slider. And you'll find both of those down at the bottom right hand corner of ACR. So first of all I'm just going to boost up the clarity slider to about plus 25 and as I do that you can just see the detail around the eyes just sharpening up a little bit and that's just as the contrast increases. Now I'm going to do the same with the vibrancy slider and just increase that to about plus 30 and what that does is to saturate the less saturated colours to a greater degree than the more saturated colours. So it's great for skin tone so as I do that you can just see the colour in the skin just really coming out. So just click open image OK, now we're in the Elements Editor. What I want to do is take a look at removing a few of those spots and blemishes. And to make sure that I can really see what's going on, I'll need to zoom the image right into 100%. But before that, I do that, just so I can check on the before and after, I'm just going to duplicate that background layer. And the easiest way to do that is just right-click with your mouse. When the menu appears, just select Duplicate Layer, click OK, and you'll see that duplicate layer appear. 
With that done, I want to zoom the image to 100%. So all I need to do is go Control Plus or Option Plus on a Mac. And if I just check down here in the bottom left hand corner, you'll see a little percentage number. And we're just going to zoom that right in to 100%. So if we hold down the space bar on the keyboard, just left click and hold with our mouse, release, and then click again. And we can just navigate around the whole of the image just by left clicking, keeping our finger down on the space bar. So we just start up here on the forehead. And once we're in position, we just want to select the Spot Healing Brush Tool. So if we go over to the Tool Palette, just left click and hold. Make sure that we've got the Spot Healing Brush selected. And then you'll see the small circle, which just shows the brush size. And what we want to do is just make sure that brush size is just slightly larger than some of the spots. And we can adjust the size either by using the size slider just here, so we're at about plus 25, or we can just use the square bracket tools on, on the keyboard, left one to make the brush smaller, right one to make it larger. Then to remove the spot, we just quickly click over each of those spots, and as you see, they very quickly just disappear. Again, when I want to move around the image, all I need to do is hold down spacebar, left click and hold, drag the image into position, and I can very quickly just navigate around the picture and just take out any other spots around the face that I want to get rid of. Now, some of the spots, like just here, are a little bit tricky to get rid of with the spot healing brush. So I'll just control Z that to get rid of it. And what we're going to do is take a look at one of the other healing brush tools to get rid of sort of more determined blemishes like this one. So if we go back over to the spot healing brush, left click and hold again and we we'll select the healing brush tool and this time to make a brush size a little larger hold down alt and you'll see the cursor turn into a small target left click release alt and then just left click over that blemish and what you'll see is it takes a sample from the target area and blends it in over the top of the blemish so as you can see we've got much better results there than just using the spot healing brush. Okay, with the spots and blemishes all healed, if we just get the image to fit to screen by going control zero, and then what we want to do now is take a look at the dark areas just underneath each of the eyes. So if you just go control plus just to zoom in, hold down space and just move those eyes into position. And now what we want to do is just to select this dark area beneath each of the two eyes. So before we do that, we're just going to create a new layer. And we can do that by just clicking the Create a New Layer icon just below the Layers palette. As soon as we do that, we see Layer 1 appear. And then to actually make our selection, we're going to use the Polygonal Lasso tool. we will find that over in the Tool palette. Just click on the Lasso tool and hold. Pop-up menu will appear. Select the last option, which is the Polygonal Lasso tool. With that selected, all we need to do now is just very quickly select that dark area just beneath the eye. So with the left eye selected, we we'll hold down our spacebar, left click to see the right eye. Make sure that we've got Add to Selection selected in the options at the top. You'll see a little plus symbol appear just on the cursor here. And again, we're just going to very quickly and roughly just select that dark area around the eye. And again, just finish off our selection. Now, before we get rid of the darkness, we're just going to refine the edge. I'm going to set our smooth to about 30, and we're going to take our feather up to about 5 pixels. Just click OK, and that just helps with the transition between the new and the old. Click and hold on the spot healing brush, and select the healing brush tool. And in the options at the top of the screen, we just want to make sure that we've got sample all layers ticked. Now, hold down Alt to take our selection area or our selection sample. And now we can just very quickly just paint over that dark area underneath the eye. If you need to, just hold down Alt to remake your selection for your sample area. And we'll just quickly paint over. And as you see, if I click the layer one off and on again, and you can just see how that smoothed out the skin quite nicely.
So again, I hold down the space bar, left click and move over to the right eye. Again, take a new sample. Again, just going to smooth out that skin using the healing brush tool and lighten it up. So if I now go control minus a little bit so we can see both eyes and control H just to hide our selections, you can see how that's already looking a lot better. Now, just to make it look a lot more natural, we can take the opacity of that layer down to about 65% and you can just see the texture of the original layer just coming through that smooth layer. Now, if we just go control E and that will flatten our adjusted layer onto the original image. OK, now if I just zoom back into the image and have a look around, I can see there's still quite a few little hairs coming over the face, which I just want to tidy up. I do those with, again, a combination of the healing and spot healing brush tool. So just go Control D just to make sure you've got rid of any selections from the last step. And I'm just going to hold down space and start to navigate around the screen, first of all using the spot healing brush, just to clean up a few of those stray hairs. Now you might find in a few locations that when you drag over a hair it actually adds more hair to the image. If that happens just go Control Z, swap over to the healing brush tool, hold down Alt just to take a sample and then paint over and again you can very quickly just get rid of those sort of stray hairs. Now if I zoom out a little bit we can see quite a distracting hair just over here on the left hand side so just zoom in a little bit more now making sure I've got the healing brush tool just take a sample from the right hand side and I'm just going to carefully just brush all the way down the length of that entire hair as you see it's done quite a good job at the top it's a little bit more work down here at the bottom so again just paint over and any slight problems we can just go in and just neaten up a little bit more with the healing brush tool. So there we've quite quickly and neatly tidied up the hair just make that fit the view again and now I have a look at how to whiten eyes and lighten teeth. So if we go over to our tool palette we just select the polygonal lasso tool. It's going to zoom into our image and this time just use the tool to very quickly to select the whites of the eyes. And again, as I make my selection of each area, I just want to make sure that I've got the Add to Selection icon pushed. And then I can select each of those areas at the same time. And that, that way I, I won't have to make sort of multiple adjustments to each of these areas. OK. Now I'm going to refine that edge just to help smooth the transition, but this time I'm going to take the feather down to about 2 pixels, but I'll leave this smooth up at 30 and just click OK. Now I want to create a new hue saturation adjustment layer. So if I click the adjustment layer icon, down to hue saturation, and you'll see the new hue saturation layer appear. And you'll also see that the mask, which is usually white, is now black with two small white dots. And that's basically masking out the whole of the image bar those few areas of the whites of the eyes that we selected. That basically means any adjustments that we make to hue saturation will only affect the whites of the eyes rather than the whole image. So what we're going to do is we're going to pinpoint the red within the eye. We can see a little bit of red just there on the left eye. So if we go to the master drop down and just select red and we're just going to reduce the saturation right down to minus 60. Now to help lighten the eyes a little bit more we're just going to remake our selection and we can do that by hitting control on the keyboard, keeping the button down, left clicking back onto that mask layer. Now when we go down to adjustment layers and levels again we've got exactly the same selection and mask and any adjustments we make to our levels will only affect the whites of the eyes. So here we want to lighten up those whites, so we're going to reduce the highlight slider down to about 200. And you just see how much lighter that looks. If I just switch that layer off and on, and you see we've really whitened and lightened those eyes, but it still looks quite nice and natural. So with the eyes done, we're now going to take a look at doing the teeth, and exactly the same way. 
scale control D just to make sure we don't have any selections. Just going to use the polygonal lasso tool to very quickly just select around the teeth. OK, with the selection made, again we want to refine the edge with a smooth of 30 and a feather of just 2 and click OK. Then we want to create a new hue saturation layer but this time from the drop down we're just going to select yellow and reduce the saturation down to minus 80 and we're going to take the lightness of the teeth just up a notch to plus 15. Now holding down control just click back into that layer mask click on the adjustment layer icon select levels and we're just going to reduce the highlight slider down to about 230 just to give the teeth a little bit of boost in that whiteness and really lighten them up. So now we've got the eyes and teeth looking a bit better we're just going to take a very quick look at the lips as well. So if we click back onto the image layer which is background copy just here select the healing brush tool and with a brush size of about 40 just going to take a sample point over on the left hand side and we just want to really sort of paint in onto those lips and just take out any of those sort of dry areas. We're just basically doing a very quick bit of uh, smoothing of the lips. And once that's done, we just want to boost the color. So if you go down to the left bottom of the tool palette, we'll select the sponge tool. If it's not there and you've got the dodge and burn tool selected, just click and hold on the dodge and burn tool, select the sponge tool, and then in the options at the top, make sure you've got a size of about 90 pixels. We want mode to saturate and our flow as about 5%. And what we're going to do is long sweeping movements, just brush straight over the lips. And what that'll do is just enhance the colour and just give the lips a bit of a, a deeper hue. So the portrait's now looking a lot better, but we're going to take it one stage further. First of all, by just smoothing out those skin tones a little bit more and removing any slight blemishes. And then we're just going to sharpen up some of the facial details. But before we do that, we just want to flatten the image so far. So if you go up to layer options, just click on the options, down to flatten image, and that'll go down into your background layer. And as we did previously, we just want to duplicate that background layer. So if we right click, select duplicate layer, just click OK. And what we're going to do now is just apply a smoothing effect to the whole of that image layer. So we'll do this by going up to Filter, down to Noise, and down to Median. And we're going to increase the radius right up to about 20. And as you can see in the preview, it's just completely smoothing out all of that colour and tone. Just click OK. And before we move on, we just want to add a little bit of blur to that layer. If we don't, then we're going to get a slightly cartoony looking effect on the skin. So if we go back to Filter, down to Blur, down to Gaussian Blur, and we just want a radius very subtly of about 3. And just see how that's just smoothing out the edges and the difference between each of those colour tones. Just click, click OK to apply that. Now obviously that's not looking great. And what we want to do is get that sharp facial details appearing through our skin smoothing. So to do this we're going to use a layer mask and we're going to create one of these in Photoshop elements with quite a handy little trick. So if we go down to our layers palette from the adjustment layer icon select levels. As soon as the levels layer appears don't make any adjustments just drag and drop that just in between the two image layers. Then holding down alt drag just between the top layer and our new levels layer as soon as you see that cursor change, left click and that will clip the adjustment layer to our image layer. We can now use the adjustment layer mask to hide or reveal the top image layer. And we can do that using the brush tool. So we go over to our tools, just select the brush tool, make sure that we've got black selected as our foreground colour. I'm going to start off with an opacity of 100%. And we're just going to very quickly just brush over the background just to remove any of the effect and also around sort of the hair and the jacket. Now once we've roughly gone around we can just see the mask and the shape of the face appearing in our mask. I'm going to zoom in so that I get a, a better look at the facial. 